Hello everyone. Welcome to the Pathology Insights. In this video, today we will be discussing about the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. We have four major subtypes of the thyroid carcinomas. One is the papillary carcinoma, follicular carcinoma, poorly differentiated and anaplastic carcinoma and the medullary carcinoma. Out of all the four major subtypes, papillary carcinoma is the one which is more common. Next in common is the follicular carcinoma, next is the medullary carcinoma and then comes poorly differentiated and anaplastic carcinomas. So we will discuss about the papillary carcinoma. Now the tumor cells of the papillary carcinoma, they have distinctive nuclear features. They have a typical characteristic nuclear features and they show the follicular cell differentiation. Now the age and the sex is uh, more common in the females. It shows a female predominance with the male, female to male ratio of 3 is to 1. And age is it occurs in the children to the adults. It can occur in the younger age group and even in the adults showing the female predominance. Now when we see the etiology, the most important environmental uh, cause is exposure to the radiation. And another cause is the genetic causes where we have mutations of the three genes three important genes, BRAF, RAT rearrangement and the RAS mutations. These three mutations are important in the papillary carcinoma. Now, uh, these are the causes and there are certain risk factors which are associated with the papillary carcinoma. Though exact relationship is not clear, but these factors are found to be associated with the papillary carcinoma. We have obesity, diabetes, smoking, alcohol consumption, dietary nitrates and dietary iodine excess. So these are the risk factors for the development of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. Now when we see the genetic alterations, as I told you, we have three important genes. So one is, first one is a point mutations of the BRAF gene. Now in this point mutations, we have valine, which is substituted by the glutamate at the position of the 600 amino acid. Now, because of this substitution, there is a continuous activation of the tyrosine kinase, which causes activation of the MAP kinase pathway. This one, uh, the point mutations of the BRF is the most common genetic alterations what we see in the conventional papillary carcinoma. Now, next important is the RET rearrangement. Because of this RET rearrangement, we have a fusion gene, RET PTC fusion gene that encodes for uh, the protein which has uh, which is uh, which encodes for constitutively active form of the RAT tyrosine kinase. Because of this constitutively active form of RAT tyrosine kinase, we have the continuous activation of the MAP kinase pathway. And another important one is a missense mutation of the RAS. Missense mutation means here one nucleotide is substituted for the another. There is a change in the sequence in the codon because of which that is a, it encodes for an another protein. So because of which again we have the activation of the mitogen activated protein kinase pathway, MAP kinase pathway. Now this missense mutation of the RAS gene is more common in the follicular variant of the papillary thyroid carcinoma. In the conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma, we have the point mutations of the BRAF, whereas in the follicular variant of the PTC, we have the missense mutation of the RAS gene. So either it is BRAF mutations or RAT rearrangement or the RAS mutations. The final thing is we have the activation of the mitogen activated protein kinase pathway. So because of this, that the signals are produced which causes the cell proliferation, differentiation, invasion and the metastasis. Means we have a formation of a tumor. Further in this, if there is a mutation of the TERT promoter, that is telomerase reverse transcriptase, this gene, TERT promoter gene, uh, which encodes for telomerase reverse transcriptase. If there is a mutation in this again, there will be further progression of the tumor with the bad prognosis. So because of these three gene mutations, we have cell proliferation. Along with this, if we have mutations in the TERT, the tumor will further progress and will have a bad prognosis. Very rarely in a few tumors, we see the ALK gene mutations, but the most common is the above three mutations. Now, when we see the localization where we can find this papillary carcinoma, it can occur anywhere in the thyroid. It can occur in any lobe or in the isthmus anywhere in the thyroid. Another one is in the ectopic thyroid tissue. Ectopic thyroid tissue means it 
other than the thyroid anywhere in the body if we have a thyroid tissue there also it can develop another one is a thyroglossal duct cyst thyroglossal duct is uh, during the embryological development the foramen cecum which is present in the posterior part of the tongue from there a protrusion develops it grows caudally and at the caudal end we have a development of the thyroid gland and later on once this thyroid gland is formed this duct thyroid duct it becomes a fibrous cord like vestigial thing but in some individuals we have the remnants of this thyroid duct and we have accumulation of the secretions which becomes a thyro thyroglossal duct cyst now in this also we can have the thyroid tissue so in that thyroid tissue papillary carcinoma can develop so papillary carcinoma can develop in the thyroglossal duct cyst and another important uh, thing is in the stroma ovary stroma ovary is uh, actually a germ cell tumor uh, which is a type of the teratoma monodermal teratoma what we call it as and this the ovary will uh, the ovary in this ovarian tumor we see only the thyroid follicles so from this also we can have the thyroid papillary carcinoma of the thyroid so it can occur anywhere in the thyroid gland or in the ectopic thyroid tissue or in the thyroglossal duct cyst or in the stroma ovary now what are the clinical features it can present as an usually most commonly it presents as an asymptomatic thyroid nodule and on the uh, thyroid scan it usually presents as a cold nodule means hypofunctioning nodule if it is uh, invading into the adjacent tissue if it is an aggressive one there can be a recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement and then the patient will have hoarseness of the voice and the dysphagia and in this the thyroid function test will be normal so there is no diagnostic utility for this and when we do the ultrasound in the ultrasound the papillary carcinoma it appears as a hypoechoic or isoechoic nodule with microcalcifications and disorganized internal vascularity so this is how it presents so most common presentation is asymptomatic thyroid nodule which is a cold nodule on the thyroid scan now when we see the gross features in the thyroid carcinoma it appears as a firm gray white uh, nodule with an irregular margins and the cut surface it shows a granular surface granular is because you have a small papillae so that papillae uh on the grossly it appears as if they are the small granules so when we see the cut section surface it will appear as a granular surface and because the calcifications will be there we can find the specks of microcalcification sometimes even the bone formation can also be seen here and the size it varies from less than 1 mm to several centimeters and may have variation depending upon the variant of the papillary thyroid carcinoma we have a several variants of the papillary carcinoma some of them will have more fibrosis some will have cystic so depending upon again the variant of the papillary carcinoma this uh, gross presentation might be different but this is how it presents classically it is a firm gray white uh, tumor with irregular borders and having a granular surface on the cut section it can present as a unifocal or it can present as a multifocal also the multifocal because the tumor it uh, spreads through the intraglandular lymphatics so we have a tumor in one area it spreads through intraglandular lymphatics and at the time of the presentation it presents as a multifocal tumor and sometimes it presents as a mural nodule in a colloid cyst we have a large cystic space and we have a small a mural nodule which will be the tumor so presentation can be either unifocal multifocal or cystic with a mural nodule now recently they have recognized two precursor lesions one is papillary microcarcinoma this is recognized as a precursor for conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma and another one is non invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary like nuclear features now this is a very low grade tumor so they didn't want to call it as a carcinoma also so they just gave it as a neoplasm and this is a very low grade neoplasm with a minimal risk of the recurrence this one is thought to be a uh, precursor lesion for the follicular variant of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid 
papillary microcarcinoma is a precursor for conventional type of the BTC, whereas non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary-like nuclear features is a precursor for follicular variant of the papillary thyroid carcinoma. Now, when we see the microscopy, uh, in the microscopy, typically we have a branching papillae, the complex branching papillae with a fibrovascular core. Papillae means finger-like projections which have a fibrovascular core. That is a true papillae. If you don't have a fibrovascular core, but we just have the cells which are appearing like a finger-like projections, we call them as a pseudo papillae. If we have a fibrovascular core, then only it becomes a true papillae. So in the papillary carcinoma, we have a complex branching papillae with a fibrovascular core, which are lined by the tumor cells. Now they have a typical nuclear features and sometimes we can find even the squamous metaplasia also. So I told you we have a typical nuclear features for the papillary carcinoma. What are those nuclear features? First one is we have enlargement of the nucleus and the nucleus becomes oval shaped. In the benign thyroid follicles, we have a round nucleus, whereas if in the papillary carcinoma, we have an oval elongated nuclei and we see the nuclear overlapping. This nuclear overlapping is because the cells are proliferating fastly, so they show the nuclear overlapping. And then we have a ground glass nuclei or an orphan anion nuclei. It means the nucleus appears clear. This is because uh, the nuclear membrane, the chromatin material is present just below the nuclear membrane. So nuclear membrane appears more prominent and the entire nucleus, it appears as if it is empty. So this, they called it as a ground glass appearance or the orphan anion eye nuclear. Orphan anion eye because orphan anion is a comic character. Now her eyes were similarly picturized. So this nuclei, they resemble the eyes of the orphan annie, so they named it as an orphan annie and nucleus. Ground glass nuclei is uh, the glass which is uh, very clear, so they also called it as a ground glass appearance. So we have the two names for this, that is ground glass or the orphan annie and nuclei. And another important feature is we have the nuclear grooves. Now what are these nuclear grooves? They are formed because of the nuclear membrane which is indenting inside which is folding inside you see here this is the cell and this is the nucleus the nuclear membrane is folding inside so this fold it appears as if it is a groove in the nucleus so this is one of the feature of papillary carcinoma another important feature is nuclear pseudo inclusions now why they called it as a pseudo inclusions is because this is not exactly the inclusion but it is the cytoplasm which is present in the nucleus when the nuclear membrane is folding inside along with that the cytoplasm also enters here so in the sections we don't find this continuation instead we see only the cytoplasm in the nucleus which appears as if it's an inclusion so we call it as a nuclear pseudo inclusions so these are the nuclear features okay first is the nuclear enlargement with oval shaped nuclei we have nuclear overlapping then we have a ground glass nuclei or an orphan anion nuclei. Nuclear grooves are present and nuclear pseudo inclusions are also present. Now we can find the samoma bodies and the cytoplasm of the tumor cells. It is pale or it can be astrophilic. Now what are these samoma bodies? Now here you are seeing some concentrically arranged things. These are the samoma bodies. Samoma bodies are nothing but it is the calcium deposition in a concentric manner around the necrotic tumor cell. Now that means this is a dystrophic type of the calcification. Okay, we have a central nidus as a necrotic tumor cell surrounding which we have the deposition of the calcium in a concentric manner. So this we call them as a samoma bodies and we see samoma bodies in the lymphatic spaces or in the, or in the papillary stroma. Stroma of the papillae, we see them. Now coming from here, we have the variants. So that were the features of the conventional type of the papillary carcinoma, classical papillary carcinomas. Now we'll see what are the variants of it. So papillary microcarcinoma, if the size of the tumor is less than one centimeter, then we call it as a papillary microcarcinoma. Now this is also called as occult sclerosing carcinoma or occult papillary carcinoma. Microscopically, we have 
either encapsulated either circumscribed in a circumscribed manner we have the tumor or we have a scar like configuration at the periphery of which we see the tumor cells now here the tumor cells can be present as a papillae and they have the typical nuclear features of the papillary carcinoma here the important thing is about the size of the tumor if it is less than 1 cm then we call it as a papillary microcarcinoma this is thought to be a precursor for the conventional type of the ptc and it has an excellent prognosis now another variant is an encapsulated variant now uh, here we see a very clear cut capsulated lesion and in the capsule we have the lesion which is having a complex branching papillae which are lined by the tumor cells which are having the typical features of the conventional ptc again the only thing is the tumor is completely encapsulated and it has an excellent prognosis sometimes with this we can find even the regional lymph node metastasis also next variant is the follicular variant here we have instead of the papillae we have the follicles but these follicles are lined by the tumor cells which are showing the features of again the conventional papillary carcinoma means they have the grooves they have the ground glass nuclei they have the inclusions so all that are present but instead of lining the papillae they are lining the follicles and the colloid which is present in the follicles it will be thick homogeneous and strongly isnophilic they call it as a chewing gum colloid but a thick colloid will be present in some of these tumors we have a very large papillae cystically dilated sorry follicles cystically dilated follicles in that case we call it as a macro follicular variant another variant is a diffuse sclerosing variant this is an uncommon variant occurring in the younger age group uh, and as the name suggests diffuse sclerosing means the tumor will have a sclerotic stroma more collagen will be present in the stroma and another important feature is more number of somoma bodies you will see we see the papillae in the sclerotic stroma and we see many somoma bodies in this this is the characteristic feature of the diffuse sclerosing variant now this has a bad prognosis at the time of presentation only the patient will have extra thyroidal extension or or uh, she can have an cervical lymph node metastasis and metastasis even to the lung so this one has a bad prognosis now another variant is a tall cell variant so as the name suggests the tumor cells are tall they are about 2 to 3 times as tall as they are wide and they have an abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm but the nucleus shows typical features of again the conventional ptc we have a ground glass nuclei inclusions grooving all that we can see here and we call it as a tall cell variant when the tall cells account for more than 30% of the tumor then only we can call it as a tall cell variant now this is more common in the elderly individuals and it also has a worse prognosis this also presents with extra thyroid extension and the metastasis so diffuse sclerosing variant and the tall cell variant they have a less favorable prognosis another one is a columnar cell variant now in this as the name suggests uh, the papillae will be lined by the columnar cells which will be showing the pseudo stratification prominent pseudo stratifications we can see and the papillae here will be very slender delicate thin papillae will be present which will be lined by the columnar cells showing the pseudo stratification and in this the important feature is the tumor cells the nucleus of the tumor cells doesn't show the features of conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma okay they they can be hyperchromatic nuclei they don't show the ground glass nuclei or grooving or inclusions here so they don't show the features of conventional ptc but we have a slender papillae which are lined by the columnar cells sometimes uh, we can find even the vacuole subnuclear vacuoles which will uh, we similar to that we see in the endometrioid or the intestinal adenocarcinomas next one is a cribriform or the morular variant so this exclusively we see in the females only and uh, when we see the morphology how to identify we can have a papillary pattern or we can have the follicles or we can have the cribriform cribriform means sieve like spaces will be present punched out rounded spaces will be present in the tumor cells in between the tumor cells so this pattern we call it as a cribriform pattern 
so we can have a cribriform pattern papillary pattern or the follicular pattern and we have a module squamous modules also we can find sheets of the uh, rounded sheets of the squamous cells we call it as a modules and all of them will have uh, the features of the ptc like grooving and the inclusions it may not the nuclei may not be clear but grooves and pseudo inclusions we can find them so this one we call it as a cribriform or the modular variant we are finding the modules and cribriform pattern of arrangement so we call it as a cribriform or the modular variant next one is a hobnail variant here also we call it as a hobnail variant when the tumor has more than 30% of the cells with the hobnail features now hobnail means the uh, apical snouting will be present with the nuclei present at the apical side of the cell so nucleus is present on the apical side uh, and the nucleus will uh, will have prominent nucleoli in this there can be grooving also and you have a decreased nuclear cytoplasmic ratio here there can be papillae or the micro papillae in the follicles only thing is we have to remember that the pattern of the cell it appears like a hobnail with a cytoplasmic snouting and the nuclei present at the apical surface okay this also has a bad prognosis the tumor will have extra thyroidal extension angio lymphatic invasion necrosis and atypical mitotic figures so we have diffuse sclerosing variant tall cell variant and hobnail variant which has a worse prognosis now another variant is an oncocytic variant where we see the papillae which are lined by the cells having abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm like we see anywhere the oncocytes where the oncocytes means the cells which are having abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm similar type of the cytoplasm we have here in the tumor cells which are lining the papillae and the tumor cells will be showing the nuclear features which are similar to that of the conventional ptc so that we call it as an oncocytic variant so other uh, rare variants are solid or the trabecular variant where we have uh, complete solid sheets of the cells or the trabecular pattern of the arrangement when the tumor cells will have the features of the conventional ptc it also has a poor prognosis and is associated with the lung metastasis other very rare variants we have are the spindle cell variant clear cell and the warthin like variant so these are the rare variants of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid now mode of the spread of this is most common is the lymphatic spread to the to the cervical lymph nodes minority of the cases we can have even the hematogenous spread to the lungs most common is lymphatic rarely it can be hematogenous also and the diagnostic tests are the pet scan radionuclide scanning we can do the fine needle aspiration cytology then the scintigraphy it presents as a cold nodule ultrasound already i told you it presents as a hypoechoic or the isoechoic nodule with the calcifications micro calcifications and this organized internal vascularity and the biopsy the core biopsy also we can diagnose it diagnose the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid here the thyroid function test is of no use in the papillary carcinoma now when we see the prognosis when compared to the other types of the carcinomas of thyroid papillary carcinoma has an excellent prognosis with a 10 year survival of about 95% now the precursor lesions they have excellent prognosis like papillary microcarcinoma and non invasive follicular neoplasm with papillary like nuclear features they both are the precursor lesions which have the excellent prognosis lobectomy is enough for them total thyroidectomy is not required and in the papillary carcinoma local and the regional recurrences have been found in 5 to 20% of the patients whereas distant metastasis in 10 to 15% of the patients and the less favorable prognostic factors are if the patient is elderly age group above 40 years if there is any extra thyroidal extension or there is any presence of the distant metastasis so this is about the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid and when we see the summary what you have to remember is papillary carcinoma thyroid typical they have characteristic nuclear features with follicular cell differentiation when we see the etiology remember two factors environmental is exposure to radiation genetic factors are three gene mutations are important braf ret rearrangement and the ras mutations when we see the sex and the age female predominance with age group from children to the adults sites we have four sites 
it can occur in the thyroid anywhere in the thyroid ectopic thyroid tissue thyroglossal ducts and the stroma ovary when we see the morphology grossly it appears as a gray white form with a granular surface on the cut section it can be unifocal multifocal or present as a mural nodule in the cyst microscopy we have to see the typical characteristic nuclear features of the tumor cells which are lining the papillae cells should have orphan anion nuclei nuclear overlapping grooves and pseudo inclusions some of our bodies also will be seen in 50% of the cases now the precursor lesions for this are the micro papillary carcinoma and we have non invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary like nuclear features we have a variants 12 variants are there follicular variant where we have predominant follicular pattern micro papillary less than 1 cm size encapsulated where the tumor itself is entirely encapsulated tall cell variant where the tumor cell is 2 to 3 times tall than the width of the cell columnar cell variant where the cells are columnar showing pseudo stratification but no nuclear features of the ptc hobnail variant where the tumor cells have the apical snouts with the nuclei present at the apical surface cribriform variant where we have cribriform pattern of the arrangement or the morules can be present or there can be papillae and the follicles oncocytic where the tumor cells have abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm solid trabecular the tumor cells are arranged as a sheets or the trabeculae spindle cell clear cell and warthin like are the rare variants of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid so that finishes about the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid thank you friends thank you for listening patiently in my next video i'll be talking about the follicular carcinoma of the thyroid